Welcome back to plant developmental biology course. So, we are uh, studying today shoot development particularly organogenesis part. So, in the last class if I recap we have uh, studied uh, shoot apical meristem or maintenance and here in this class we are going to study uh, organogenesis. So, if you recall this is typical shoot system. Uh, in, in plant and in shoot system we have basically few organs like during vegetative phase we have leaves and axillary branches and at the apex we have shoot apical meristem. But when the transition occurs from vegetative phase to reproductive phase this sh shoot apex uh, shoot apical meristem get converted into inflorescence meristem and then inflorescence meristem makes the flower. So, these are the typically part of shoot system. And you have seen in, in previous classes that how shoot apical meristems are organized during vegetative uh, growth and development. This is just to recap that this is a vegetative shoot apical meristem and if you remember there is a central zone and then you have rib zone and you have peripheral zone. And this is the top view of a growing shoot apical meristem. So, the central reason is shoot apical meristem, but if you look in the peripheral zone or peripheral reason of the shoot apical meristem, these are the organs which are under the process of development. So, one important thing what happens during the growth and development is that while the meristematic activity is maintained in the very tip of the meristem when the cells which are produced in the meristem when they enters in the peripheral zones they basically initiate the process of differentiation. So, here is the view of inflorescence meristem. So, it looks very similar. So, in inflorescence meristem also you have a central zone then you have peripheral zones and rib zones and stem cells are maintained in the central zone. So, this is the reason where cell division activity is very dominant and differentiation is inhibited. But when the cells enters in the peripheral zones they basically initiate uh, organ specific de developmental program depending on the fact whether if they are in the vegetative phase the lateral organs are going to be the leaf. If they are in the reproductive phase the la lateral organs are going to be a flower. So, one important thing what, what I would like to tell here that this both the process, process of meristem maintenance and the process of organogenesis is highly coordinated and it occurs simultaneously. If this, this does not happen, if let us assume that meristematic activity is more than the differentiation activity, then the meristem size will keep on increasing. On the other hand, if you have more differentiation activity, then meristems will be uh, consumed early. Under both the conditions, you are going to see abnormal growth and development. So, during the process, both the process has to be uh, coordinated. So, in, 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 in last class, we have seen how meristems are getting regulated, what are the genetic regulatory pathways, particularly ocial and claveta mediated pathway and how they basically ensures uh, meristematic activity in the, in the meristematic zone. Here in this class we are going to see how the differentiations are initiated. So, what happens in the differentiation? So, if, if you look this is a central meristem and in the peripheral meristem first site where the process initiate is called I1, I2 like that and then you have a leaf primordia like P1. P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 and so on. So, basically if you look there is a clear defined pattern of organogenesis. So, organogenesis is not a very random process. If you look the top view of a growing meristem that between P1 and P2 there is a typical angle. So, basically the positioning uh, the primordia is another very important and critical parameter during the process of organogenesis. So, everything is being maintained here and how uh, these primordias are positions, 
how it is being defined, then there was a hypothesis that some kind of inhibitory zones are created around a primordia. So, if you look, if these are the primordia, the circles basically uh, denote the, uh, the inhibitory zones, which means that in this region or around this primordia up to this region, there is not no other primordia will originate. But question is still here that how and so precisely this inhibitory domains are maintained. Another thing what, what is important which I was telling that a coordination and communication between meristem and the growing primordia is very very important. How will you prove this? So, for example, if you look this and if you kind of create a kind of incision between growing primordia and the meristem basically if you physically disturb or you are removing one of the developing primordia, what you are uh, getting here that the patterning or phyllotaxis is disturbed. For example, if you make incision between P1 and the center of the meristem, what you see that the positioning of I2 is now changed. So, it is it is basically shifted from the original position. Similarly, if you remove or, or, or somehow kill uh, the primordia, one of the primordia, if you look that there is a migration or there is a change in the position of uh, uh, other primordia. So, this tells that some kind of communication between meristem and the primordia is going on and this is absolutely important for positioning primordia in the growing meristem. What could be that signal or what could be that uh, communication way? So, one thing which is clear and you, you would have seen in previous classes as well that uh, auxin hormone which, which functions like a morphogen is absolutely important for entire growth and development. And if you look the DR5 activity which tells the auxin response activity, if you look here, so in the primordia, in the growing primordia, auxin amount is very, very high. And then if you look some of the mutants, so if you look the pin mutant, pin is basically a protein which is responsible for polar transport of the auxin. How it happens, I will just discuss here, but if you look the pin mutants, if you do not have pin protein, which means that the auxin is not getting distributed properly, you look the structure that organogenesis is almost blocked and the structure looks like a pin. Whereas, if you just apply little bit of auxin exogenously, micro application of auxin, you can see that organogenesis can initiate. So, this suggests that auxin is playing very, very important role in the organogenesis or in the primordia differentiation. How the auxin basically works? So, auxin is biosynthesized in some of the cells and then they can be distributed or they can be transported and the transport of auxins occurs through a well established auxin transport system which is also called polar auxin transport system. Because the transport of auxin is directional and how it occurs if you look the IA, IA is one auxin when in the cell wall and, and, and the cell. So, basically there are two kinds of protein, aux protein and pin protein. So, pin proteins are auxin efflux carrier, aux protein are auxin influx carrier. So, through these transport systems, auxins are being uh, transported from one cell to another cells. Another very important thing which is always associated with the pin proteins are that they can be asymmetrically localized in the cell. So, one particular cell wall may have the pin proteins which means that they ha their asymmetric localization in the cell wall can provide a direction for auxin movement. So, if pin is localized here then auxin can move from here to here. And this kind of polar auxin transport basically helps in gaining auxin maxima in some of the tissues. So, one hypothesis was that there could be that auxin is getting accumulated very high in the primordia and this is happening through the 
polar oxygen transport and this has been tested and this has been shown in, in a great detail uh, using different mutants or different uh, approaches that what happens if this is a meristem then auxins are getting transported towards the position where a promodia has to be initiated. And this is how the reason are these tissues they basically achieve auxin maxima and when auxin level is increased beyond a certain point it initiate a primordia specific developmental program. And then another thing is important that it can initiate program then the auxin can be diverted from the place. So, that a crucial uh, balance is, is always our homeostasis of auxin is maintained. So, if you look the central zone in central zone a cytokinin is predominant and then you have a NOx gene which is responsible for the maintenance. But in the primordia NOx gene expression is low, cytokinin is low, but auxin is high. So, the critical balance between auxin and cytokinin and some of the key transcription factors defines the meristematic activity in, in the meristem and uh, differentiation activity in the primordia. This you can also see by the genetic interaction. So, if this, this, this is a double marker here you have DR5 is auxin responsive promoter driving a nuclear localized uh, yellow signal which is basically auxin response and pin protein has the GFP. So, you can see the GFP localization as well as the auxin response and you can see that auxin response are very high in the primordia. And MP is a transcription factor which is a auxin response transcription factor which, which is regulated by the activity of MP is regulated by auxin. And what happens if you have a single mutant of MP you can see that the differentiation or, or the phylotaxis or the organogenesis is disturbed. But if you combine MP with the pin mutants where basically you have the response auxin response factor mutant as well as the polar auxin transport mutants you can see the phenotype uh, where organogenesis is almost blocked. If I summarize here you have auxin and then auxin is getting diverted in the site of primordia through the polar auxin transport and then in the primordia you are going to have a very high amount of auxin and this auxin initiate the program and then auxin has been diverted from there through the vascular tissues. So, this is what happens in the in the uh, meristem growing meristem. So, you have a central meristematic zone and you have a, a peripheral primordia and the another very important thing is the border or the boundary between meristem and primordia. This has to be defined. So, up to what reason the cell division activity should occur and then when the differentiation initiate and this kind of boundaries are maintained by some of the genes which are very specifically uh, expressed in the in the boundary for example, CUC2 they are LOB domain containing uh, or some of them are NAC domain containing and some of them are LOB, LOB is lateral organ boundary uh, domain containing transcription factor. So, if you look here in the meristem you have Wuschel and Cleveta activity, high cytokinin, Wuschel and Cleveta activity and the gene meristematic. Uh, meristem regulating gene like STM they ensures meristematic activity here. But if you look in the primordia you have high amount of auxin, auxin is activating uh, auxin response factor 5 or MP and then they are activating some leaf primordia or floral primordia specific genes which are basically regulating primordia differentiation. The coordination between meristem and the lateral organs is well established. And if you look this there is a feedback from lateral organs which also controls the pseudopical uh, meristem activity. So, it is signaling both way. So, meristem is controlling the activity of lateral organ go growth and lateral organ is going to control the meristematic activity. How? If you look here pin protein localization in the wild type this is uh, primordia P1, I1, I2. If you look the pin protein, pin protein is mostly localized to the L1 layer. Whereas, if so when this, this is a normal growing primordia, but if you remove one lateral primordia which could be leaf primordia, if you just remove it what is happening that distribution or localization of pin protein is totally disturbed here. 
So, this tells that the presence of lateral organ or development of lateral organ in the peripheral zone is sending some kind of signal uh, to the meristem for, for its own activity. And you here, if you produce auxin in a high amount, so basically in the Clavata 3 promoter, you are using Clavata 3 promoter, Clavata 3 is expressed in the central region and if you synthesize auxin, what you see that the meristematic zone is decreased, the meristem size is decreased. On the other hand, if you remove auxin from the meristem, so basically this yucca, yucca genes are auxin biosynthesis genes. So, if you have double mutant of yucca 1 and 4 or triple or 4 mutants of different uh, members of yucca gene family. So, essentially what you are doing, you are reducing total biosynthesis, uh, biosynthesis of auxin and in that case what you can see that the meristem size is increasing. So, this tells that there is a clear feedback signaling between lateral organs as well as the meristem. So, under normal condition when your shoot apex is here, you have lateral organs coming, then this is your central zone, auxins are getting uh, transported to the primordia and then in primordia it is initiating program, whereas there is a feedback regulation here. But if you remove organs, the programming is totally disturbed as you can see from the pin protein, the distribution of auxin is not happening in the normal way and this is affecting meristematic activity as well as uh, organogenesis. Uh, another important thing, so apart from that the organ specification or organ identity or differentiation. One more thing which is getting insured at this early stage is organ polarity. So, if you look any lateral organs whether it is flower or in different organs of the flower, sepal, petals, stamen or carpels or if you look the leaf, they display a kind of polarity. So, if you look leaf, so, here is the polarity if you look the basal side of the leaf which is very different than the apical side. So, here if you look a typical leaf, so the basal side of the leaf and apical sides of leaves are very different. So, this kind of uh, polarity is called proximal and distal polarity. On the other hand, if you look the leaf, so the leaf which is towards the meristem is a kind of adaxial and the, the the portion which is away from the meristem is called abaxial and if you look that there is a clear organ polarity and this polarity is also uh, need to be uh, established at the time of organogenesis. So, for example, if you look a schematic diagram what happens in the growing meristem. So, this is meristem and the, this is the lateral organ and in lateral organ the face of the lateral organ which is towards the meristem it, this is called adaxial and the, the, the part of the, the lateral organ which is away from the meristem is called abaxial. And if you look the features of adaxial and abaxial surface, it is very different. So, that is high and this has to be established early. And in the leaf, if you look at the, the leaf growing primordia, so this is your adaxial site, this is your abaxial site. And if you look the positioning of the vascular tissue, so xylem is positioned towards the adaxial sites, phloem is positioned towards the abaxial site. And there are lot of genes which is responsible for maintaining this polarity, adaxial versus abaxial polarity. For example, if you look some of the mutants, if you have this mutants, you can see that there is a radial pattern and you can see that xylem is in the uh, center and phloem is the peripheral. If you look fabulosa mutant, here it is opposite pattern, you have a phloem in the center, xylem in the center. So, in both the cases what is happening that uh, polarity is disturbed. So, this polarity establishment occurs very early when meristem is getting maintained in the center and primordia and the lateral organ primordia is initiated. And the positional signal plays very important role. And this is clear from this experiment. So, what happens that if you take this, this is a growing meristem and then the, you have a lateral primordia. So, this is what I said that this is your proximal region, this is distal region, this is your adaxial region, this is your abaxial region. And what you do, if you just make a very small incision basically in just the L1 layer between primordia and the meristem, if you make a kind of incision here in L1 layer, what you see that the primordia, the leaf primordia which is coming here, it has totally lost the polarity. So, it looks like a very uh, different or more kind of 
radial patterning. Whereas, if you look this primordia which is coming from this side, it is still maintaining the polarity. You can clearly see the adaxial side is very different than the abaxial side, whereas here everything is looking like radical pattern, radial pattern. And this suggests basically that there is a communication between meristem and primordia that is also important for establishing organ uh, polarity here. So, if you look this is schematic diagram, this is the top view you have a central zone and some kind of signals are coming from here and these signals are helping in defining adaxial versus abaxial polarity in the lateral organs. There are some of the genes which has been identified to regulate uh, this organ polarity we will discuss in the next class. So, some, some genes are regulating uh, adaxial surface, some genes are regulating abaxial polarity we will see. Another important thing here is that the signals derived from Yabe gene activity in organ primordia regulates growth uh, and uh, partitioning of Arabidopsis shoot of meristem. So, it is not only that the, prom the meristem is regulating the organ, but the organ specific genes are also regulating the meristematic activity. So, Yabe class of genes are the genes which regulates which provides abaxial polarity in the organ you will see in, in next class in detail. But what happens here that if you look the expression pattern of uh, fill which is a kind of a Yabe gene what you see that this is your inflorescence meristem expression in the inflorescence meristem per se is very very low or almost not detected. But if you look the primordia lateral organ primordia expression is very high but expression is more towards the abaxial surface than the adaxial surface. If you look the top view of it, you can clearly see that this is the primordia, but in the primordia expression is only restricted away from the meristem which is your abaxial surface. So, this suggests that these genes might be uh, regulating uh, abaxial fate and what happens in this mutant background if you look this is the filamentous and the double mutant filamentous and you have three mutants. What you see that the defect in the polarity genes in the organ polarity genes is basically disturbing the phyllotaxis, the arrangement of the organs which is a feature of uh, or meristematic activity. So, this is visible from here if you look the distance between two primordia to, to adjacent primordia is here in the wild type, but in the mutants this distance is basically changed. So, this suggests that the polarity genes which are expressed in the organ they are also regulating the meristematic uh, function in the shoot apical meristem. Some of the markers, so two very important and well established meristematic markers are Uschel and Claveta. So, if you look the Claveta expression domain, so in wild type this is the Claveta expression domain and this is in the very tip restricted here in the center, but if you look the single mutant the domain of Claveta 3 expression is expanded and double mutant it can be even further expanded. Similarly, if you look Uschel expression domain here in the wild type it is restricted very in the few cells here. But if you look the single mutants or double mutants the Uschel expression domain is significantly expanded both laterally as well as in the uh, apical and basal domains. So, this suggests that the meristematic activity or the regulators of meristematic activities their expression pattern and their localization is disturbed when you have defect in the organ polarity. So, in, in, in general if you look here, so there is a meristematic activity some of the genes which is regulating meristematic activity and then in the peripheral zone the founder cells has been specified where auxin and some of the regulators are playing very important role and then outgrowth and polarity is regulated. So, these are the three different steps during the process of organogenesis. So, there are some genes for example, ASN1, Leafy, Antigometa, Cuck, Canadi all these genes are basically regulating the process together. So, if I summarize here, so you can see that in the meristematic zone where, where you can see Claveta and Uschel mediated signaling and cytokinin uh, these are the key, but there are 
many other genes as well they are regulating the meristematic activity. But in the peripheral zone in the primordia you have high amount of auxine, auxine is regulating some of the transcription factor and these transcription factors are basically activating organ specific genes, leafy and tegometa like genes and these genes are ensuring a proper differentiation. At the same time what is happening that there are some signals which is derived from the meristem and they basically is activating some of the gene like fabulosa in the adaxial side of the lateral organs and some other genes are getting activated in the abaxial side of the uh, lateral organs and then there is a kind of crosstalk and regulation between adaxial and abaxial genes and this regulation is basically ensuring a proper polarity in the growing uh, lateral organs. So, I will stop here in next class we will discuss uh, leaf development. Thank you.